Love them or hate them, reality shows have taken over the world of television. There's something fun about escaping your own life for a minute and diving into the reality of someone else's. But what if what we see in our favorite reality shows aren't actually the reality? I'm gonna spill the truth today on Top 10 Beyond the Screen. I'm your host, Joss Bedard. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you don't miss out on the common shoutouts and blooper reel. And keep with us outside of YouTube. Our social media links are down below. But for now, let's get into today's countdown list of reality shows you didn't know were Fake. I apologize in advance for ruining these shows for you. Starting off our list at number 10 is The Hills. Now, if you're anything like me, you spent all of your high school years binge watching this show, wondering why you can't live in LA with the camera crew following you and your glamorous girlfriends everywhere. Meanwhile, I was sitting there failing my math classes, eating McDonald's every day, and wearing Walmart brand clothing. Zero glamour, but still wanted my own show like that. But the show was totally convincing and I feel confident saying that we all thought it was real until the series finale's twist ending. At the end of the series in the final scene they end with Kristen Cavallari and Brody Jenner having this emotional goodbye but then the director yells cut and the camera zooms out to show that the whole thing was staged. But then the cast starts saying that it was done on purpose to leave the audience with the question what was real and what was fake? Like trying to fool you, you'll never know. But since it's been so many years since the show ended, the cast has felt more comfortable opening up about it. And Kristen Cavallari told the audience on Andy Cohen's talk show, I quote, I can tell you most of my stuff wasn't real. I'm just happy that more people are coming out and saying that stuff isn't real because for the longest time it was only me. Not gonna lie, this one hurt me a little bit because I invested a lot of my teenager emotions into that show, thinking it was real. It's a fact. Next up at number 9 is The Voice. This one makes me a little bit irritated because I feel like a competition show based around someone's talent and dreams should be nothing but real. But former contestants have come forward exposing different ways that the show is actually fake. The one thing that makes the show stand out against other singing competition shows is the fact that it is a blind audition. The judges can't see them and they only hit their buzzer if they are impressed with their voice and sound. Turns out that is not actually true. Apparently these blind auditions are actually very planned. One former contestant said that you had to go through five different auditions before doing the blind one that we see on TV. And through those auditions, the coaches can see you. They also revealed that everything is planned for you, even the genre and song that you sing at the televised audition. So the show really isn't just about the voice like it claims. Sliding into number 8 is Hell's Kitchen. If you've never seen the show, a group of amateur chefs from all walks of life are put in a competition to try and land a job as an executive chef at one of Gordon Ramsay's restaurants. Now I only say amateur because in comparison to the position on the show, that's what they might be considered. I am not discrediting any of their works or talent. But the whole premise of the show is that they are basically put through hell. It's no secret that Gordon Ramsay is the toughest chef on the planet and has no problem saying it how it is. He's intense. He's known for his potty mouth. His hilarious yet extremely rude insults and his ability to make people crumble in the kitchen. But despite the fact that it looks legitimate with real contestants and real diners in restaurants, apparently some people we see on the show are actually paid actors who are hired to stir the pot and create some good TV drama. Like the times you see Gordon getting into it with some contestants to a point where you think like they might get into a fist fight, it's not real. Gordon actually has bodyguards hidden on the set that we just don't see and those people are actors. Some contestants are real competitors and they reveal that there's no guarantee that you even win anything. Sometimes when you win the show, there ends up being like working visa issues or government grant delays and you get left with nothing in the end. So like, is it really worth it? I don't know. In spot number seven is the Jerry Springer show. Now, I like to keep some faith in humanity and I hope that there's some people out there who already know that this show is fake. But I do know that there are some firm believers that the fist fights and ridiculous plot twists are all unstaged and real. But I'm here to shed some light for those people. Now, some things are in fact real. There are real people who write into the show with their real stories trying to get on the show. But there are also some participants who have admitted that their stories were fake and that they were just actors. One participant even said that the producers told them before filming that fist fights get them more ratings, so they encourage it. It's also been revealed that the fight scenes are pre planned. Production has to coach the show participants when to start a fight based on where the camera crew is, and also their number one rule is that Jerry has to be off to the side of the stage when a fight is started, obviously for safety concerns. You cannot hurt the moneymaker, literally. But I am still hoping that most of you already knew that this was fake. Moving on to number six is MTV Cribs. A big part of my childhood was spent watching the show, so this is a little disappointing to learn. Not gonna lie. The show followed all of our favorite celebrities as they gave us an exclusive house tour of their fancy ass 
homes that we hoped one day we could afford, but we never will. Basically making you feel like a total peasant. But when I was researching for this video, I found out something that is now making me question my entire life. A lot of mansions and luxury cars that we saw on the show were rented for that episode. Like some of the celebrities would just straight up borrow a house for the day and then shoot their episode. Some people who faked their episodes were Jojo, Ja Rule, Robbie Williams, 50 Cent, Lil Bow Wow, and the list just goes on and on. But Karma came back for one of them and Ja Rule ended up getting sued by the real homeowners after he rented it for four days for the episode, but then threw a huge party after filming was done. Classic. I, although I'd do the same thing, give me a break. Halfway through our list at number five is The Simple Life. Ladies, do not even pretend that you didn't shamelessly watch this show and get a good laugh out of it. I was almost mad at myself for how much I actually liked this one. But for the people who had better time on their hands and chose not to watch it, the show followed Paris Hilton and Nicole Richie as they stayed with a small town family and learned how to live and adapt to a middle class life. They didn't have their cell phones and the only money they had access to while on the show was the money they earned from the various part time jobs that they would work. Work. Seeing these girls try to milk cows and work a burger joint was honestly hilarious. It's actually a really funny show. And it was totally believable because they obviously come from money, so to them it really was a whole different lifestyle. But many years after the series ended, Paris admitted that the show was all an act. She spoke with Access Hollywood and dropped a few truth bombs saying that they were told to play up these characters. Paris explained, They said, Nicole, you play the troublemaker. Paris, you play the ditzy airhead. We had no idea what we were getting ourselves into or what a huge success it would be and that I'd have to continue playing this character for five years. But she did admit that if she was her actual self, she doesn't think it would have been a success and said that she took that character and turned it into a huge business tool, which made her a massive success on her own. Moving on to number four, we got Divorce Court. The show started back in 1957 and has a total of 36 seasons. So whether it's real or not, it is a massive success. If you haven't seen it, it is exactly what it sounds like. You watch inside the courtroom of real life divorcing couples who each tell their stories to the judge, who then ultimately gives the ruling and all that stuff. But turns out that all of it was fake and someone outed the show with some personal proof. One woman revealed that her daughter and her boyfriend were recruited to be on the show. They were never married, only dating and they were given a backstory by the producers to lie about and act out on the show. Since then more stories have come out and even in the Wikipedia description now, it was updated, it says that the stories are all scripted reenactments of divorce cases but presented by actors. Honestly, I'd act out a dramatic divorce. I think that would be a fun gig. So like who wants to hire me? In the third spot is Survivor. Now, I don't know if I'm just in denial about this one, but I really do not want to believe that this one is fake. The show has become iconic since it started back in 2000 and now has a total of 38 seasons, which were all a huge success. The whole premise of the show is contestants sign up and get stranded on a remote island where they have to try and survive on it. They face different challenges and tasks in order to win the grand money prize, but people also get voted off each week. Turns out that there are some real aspects of the show, but a lot of what we see is staged. Despite being isolated in the wilderness trying to fend for themselves for food, past contestants have admitted that the producers gave them food and fire, we just didn't see it. The producer himself, Mark Burnett, also admitted that it wasn't the real contestants doing the challenges. Turns out they used body doubles to enhance the quality of the scene since the swimming challenges and stunts wouldn't have gone very well for average individuals. Former contestants have also said that production manipulated and controlled who got voted off each week, so it makes you wonder what parts were actually real then. Cause to me that just sounds like a whole bunch of fake. The deception is killing me. I feel like a fool because I was convinced that these people were literally out there like surviving. Taking over the number two spot is Long Island Medium. This one will be totally opinion based. It will all depend on if you believe in psychics and the work that they do. Teresa Caputo is the most famous self-proclaimed psychic in the world and has her own reality show called Long Island Medium. The show follows her personal life at home and as well as her tours where she does live psychic reading shows across the globe. But many people have come forward saying that her show is fake, including her abilities as a psychic. People have pointed out that in her live shows when she calls out people from the audience and starts to say that she's feeling a spirit from their life, that they are actually clients of hers who she has worked with before, so they're not just random members of the audience. Which would mean that this random spirit she's coming into contact with isn't so random. During one of the episodes we see her call out a woman from the audience saying, why am I picking up baby clothes? And people just seemed astonished that she would know something random like that. But the woman replied with, oh that's weird, I just put a bunch of pictures of baby clothes on my Facebook. 
Facebook page. People have said that she researches members from her audience when they purchase the ticket online to her show, and then she creeps basically and has some background information to use during her performance. But like I said, I think this one is all just personal based. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments. Finally, in the number one spot is The Bachelor slash Bachelorette. Now, this really shouldn't come as shocking news to you, but I do know that there are some diehard fans out there who try to convince me that this is in fact real and everything we see is completely unscripted and unplanned. I'm serious you guys, I've had this argument with my own sister. But in October of this year, The Bachelor was exposed for staging and reshooting key scenes. Shocker. The tea was spilled and it was revealed that the producers often manipulated what the contestants do and say and many of the authentic moments that the audience thought they saw was in fact coached by production off screen. The famous Bachelor spoiler account known as Reality Steve leaked behind the scenes footage of them filming a scene from a date multiple different times. On top of that, a former contestant came forward saying that the scenes were always set up before filming and said that the cast was always told what to do and say. It's like they were acting out their scenes not on a reality show. Which for me is not surprising, but maybe for those diehard fans it will be. Kicking off today's list at number 10 is American Idol. The nation became hooked on the show when it first came out back in 2002, basically setting the tone for the future of singing competition shows. For years, people have thought and trusted the fact that it truly is a reality show and the process of winning is unstaged and real. But as time went on, shady things started to come to surface and it doesn't seem to be as authentic than when it first aired. It was revealed that the whole the whole audition process that we see on the show is actually fake. Apparently, scouts are sent out to find the best singers before they even hold the auditions. So they select the singers they are going to let through before even seeing them, and then they add some horrible singers in there, obviously for good ratings. Because let's be honest, those are the most entertaining to watch. The entire process is actually staged around what will make the season the most entertaining. Up next, number nine is Storage Wars. If you haven't seen the show, it follows people who bid on storage lockers that up for auction without seeing everything inside of it. You get a quick glimpse at what's in it, but then they auction it off to people without actually knowing the value of the items inside. Once the highest bidder gets the locker, they investigate what's inside and you can sell the items within it if it holds value. Basically, the person who makes the most money from their locker wins. It seems genuine and it's really fun to watch, but then we found out that it's not all real. Apparently, the producers place items inside the lockers on purpose for the sake of the episode and outcome, which obviously changes the whole premise of the show because the items in the locker decide how the rest of the episode plays out. I honestly got played on this one. I was convinced it was real. Stealing the number eight spot on our list is Undercover Boss. This one bums me out because I actually love the premise of the show, especially the happy endings, which apparently are all fake. In the show, the owner of the company will go undercover and work at their own company so they can discover what really goes on in the workplace. For the most part, they learn who is slacking, who is thriving, and what things can be improved in their business. And at the end of every episode, they give the good employees these huge opportunities like school scholarships scholarships, vacations for their families, a raise, things like that. But I found out that that is all fake. A lot of aspects of the show are fake and exaggerated. The employees on the show are carefully selected beforehand and some scenes are even scripted and the big grand prizes are often not followed through. Cool. I thought it was real this whole time. Genuinely. That's like a genuine statement. Cruising into number seven is Cupcake Wars. If you're a sucker for baking shows like I am, then you might be disappointed by this. Each episode focuses on four contestants from different bakeries all across the United States. We see them go through three rounds of competition, baking the best cupcakes they can in order to win the prize of being featured at a big display event. The first round of the competition usually involves ingredients that you would never expect to see in a cupcake, like hamburger meat or something weird like that. And we're told that the contestants are finding all of this out on the spot so that they don't have any time to prepare ahead of time. Turns out that is not true. It was revealed that the contestants actually find out what the ingredients are prior to the filming of the competition. So all the reactions and stress that we find entertaining isn't actually real. They are pretty much acting all of it out. Good acting skills though. Next up at number six is Made. The reality series first aired back in 2002 and has a total of 13 seasons. Each episode follows a participant who is embarking on a mission to transform his or her life, achieving one of their lifelong dreams. For example, you often see amateur singers who are trying to make something happen and by the end of the episode, they accomplish their dreams. Now, I feel like this one should be a little more obvious that it can't be completely real. It was exposed that a lot of the talents are already there, but then 
then they downplay them in the beginning to make the change seem like really drastic. And everything is scripted ahead of time. That way the episode shows this like perfect dream come true storyline. Basically giving us false hope that dreams can easily come true. So thanks for that. Halfway through the list at number five is Mystery Diners. The series has been aired on the Food Network since 2012 and is a huge hit for food lovers. The premise of the show is the owner of the restaurant contacts the host, Charles Stiles, about a problem that he or her is having in their restaurant. Then Charles does a secret investigation and sets up hidden cameras, undercover employees and guests, all to figure out the solution of the problem. Anyways, I just want to say that it was really cool. Some people who watch the show will say that it is scripted and that it's obvious, but other people are fully convinced that every situation is real and genuine. However, the truth has come out and the show is completely scripted. Turns out that some of the restaurant employees are actually actors who audition for the part of the misbehaving employee. That way, when they get fired at the end of the episode, it doesn't actually leave like this aftermath effect on the restaurant, which is actually kind of clever and a little bit genius but I really fell for it. Taking over our number four spot is one of my guilty pleasures. It is Dance Moms. Maybe some of you haven't seen it. It's basically a show about young girls who train at Abby Lee's dance studio and compete in weekly dance competitions all over the world. But what makes it so entertaining, besides the talented dancing, is the crazy Dance Moms. I guess a large chunk of the show is actually real. The dance training is real, and so are the competitions that we see on the show. That part is all real. But the drama and the epic blowouts between the moms is fake, and there's no arguing with me on it because some of the cast members have come forward and admitted it themselves. Maddie Ziegler's mom, Melissa, once said, the moms have to fake fight sometimes. Afterward, they just start talking and laughing about it. Still in the third spot is MTV's The Real World. I have no problem admitting that I've seen all 30 seasons now. The first one came out back in 1992 and I spent my adult years catching up. It's the incredibly successful show that sticks seven strangers in a house and then just films them every day. Obviously with different personalities personalities and relationships forming between cast members, there is bound to be some drama. And there is. But apparently, it is fake. One member from the 2009 Cancun season came out and exposed the whole show process during an interview. He said that the people were real but had to audition to play a certain role. And that all the events on the show were scripted ahead of time, including some of the fights. And the editing of the show was also toyed with. They would use lines from an early interview and place it later into the season to try and like stir the pot as if you had just said it. Reality is sneaky. In spot number two is the series Breaking Amish. It follows a unique storyline of real young men and women who are trying to break free from their Amish culture in hopes to have a different life somewhere else. They actually go to New York City and do everything that they're not normally supposed to, like wearing jeans, using electricity, drinking alcohol, things like that. And normally in the episode, we see that their family disowns them if they choose to leave and live a regular life. Religion is such a trigger point in our world right now, so I was actually surprised to learn that the show wasn't genuine. Through interviews with former cast members, it was revealed that the show was scripted and their struggles in the big city weren't actually real. And some of the members on the show had left the Amish community years before they even started filming. They just a bunch of liars. Finally, at number one, we have The Amazing Race. Come on, here I was thinking this was totally real. Pretty sure I once tried to convince one of my ex-boyfriends to sign up with me. That is not a joke. <laughs> The show follows two people, usually relatives, spouses, or friends, around the world as they compete challenges along the way, like flight delays, jet lag, basically everything that just comes with traveling. And each week they have the potential of being up for elimination. But critics have pointed out that things look scripted and the elimination weeks are all planned. Because sometimes the host of the show, Phil, announces that it will be a non-elimination week. He admits that the show is planned out long in advance, not like the reality we thought it was. He said, you can't just make this stuff up as you're going along. It comes with a months and months of planning. Well, I'll be damned. Beginning the countdown list at number 10 is Naked and Afraid. It's a reality show you can watch on Discovery Channel and is exactly how it sounds. It forces participants to survive in the wilderness while being naked. I can't help but think this show like was a joke at first. Like when they thought the idea, they were like, this is a really good idea. But then like somehow it became a huge hit. But the whole thing is meant to be real and several former contestants have revealed that it's not as real as we think. Apparently it is heavily staged and produced and the crew supplies 
surprise the contestants with amenities that would never actually be found in the wilderness. Behind the scenes, they are handed tampons, prescription medication, vitamin B supplements, some food, and basically any medical attention that is needed. I get that they have to keep the participants safe, but it also kind of defeats the purpose of surviving the island. They also said the producers would stage scenes and fights to create the villains and the drama on the series, which doesn't really surprise. Coming up next at number nine is Catfish. Now, Chris and I have been arguing about this for weeks now. I don't want to believe it's fake, but he is positive that it is. And after some research, I have found some examples of why people think the whole thing is fake. So this is dedicated to Chris. MTV senior vice president once admitted that the catfish is the one who usually reaches out to the show as a way to unburden themselves. But then they changed the story to look like the catfish she reached out to them. A person who was once on the show also revealed that everyone has to sign a release form and waiver, so the filming isn't as spontaneous as they make it seem on the show. Plus, sometimes the forms will force them to change the storyline. They might even change it for better ratings. Moving on to spot number eight, we got Love Island. Your reality show can't be saved after contestants do an interview and say, we were treated like performing animals. Like many other reality shows, it follows a dozen people living in a villa together for 10 weeks and relationships form and get messy real quick. But former contestants have come forward to reveal secrets, saying that the show is scripted and fake. One person told the mail, people don't realize how scripted it is, how much the producers influence it. It is completely disingenuous and a lot of the time very, very fake. It was also revealed that relationships on the show were fake, as well as different fight scenes. The producers basically staged everything to create the most dramatic outcome for the sake of entertaining. Swiping the number seven spot is Jersey Shore. Let me start off by saying I watched this show religiously. I had Jersey Day at my house every Thursday, and I even wore a shirt that said Meatball Problems. Only Jersey Shore fans will understand that reference. Basically, we just followed the same cast members every season, working at a t-shirt shop and getting drunk every night and making poor decisions. That was basically all it was. What we saw in the season was very much real, like they were actually that drunk and really that obnoxious, but a few things were revealed which shows that the show wasn't as spontaneous and real as we saw. All the random guests that they had over at their house had to go through an ID scanning system and a sobriety test before even entering the house to make sure that they were 21 years of age and obviously not too intoxicated for legal purposes. Also, to the diehard fans out there, the note for Sammy was staged. They weren't weren't allowed to write notes on set, it was a rule, so the producers set that up and then told Sammy that the roommates wrote it because Sammy thought it was the producers who did. I bet I just crushed all of your dreams. Up next number 6 is MasterChef USA. Now apparently the Australian version of the show is real, it's just the US one that's fake. Go figure. It is one of the most famous cooking contests on TV and has chefs competing for the title of MasterChef and $250,000. Despite how real it looks, a former contestant revealed that the competition is far from real. Ben Starr posted a long blog post explaining that they actually had to agree to be potentially fictionalized and humiliated throughout the process. He also said that editors would piece together different pieces of dialogue to create statements that were never actually said to stir up some drama. He had no problem saying it wasn't authentic and the whole experience on the show was not an honest one. Halfway through at number 5 is Duck Dynasty. The show follows the Robertson family who became wealthy by operating their own family business of making duck hunting products. Products. But throughout the series, the truth has surfaced that the show is scripted and a lot of what we see isn't real. During an interview, Phil admitted that the editors would put in fake beeps to make it look like someone used profanity just to like stir up some drama, but no one did. He also said that the producers would script and change their prayers. If you don't know this, the family is actually known for being very religious and normally they would pray and say, in Jesus name, amen. But they would have them change their wording to say, love you Lord for the food, thank you for loving us. Amen. They did that so they didn't offend other religions, but then it wasn't really staying true to their own religion, which is what they're known for and basically why they have their show too. But whatever, that is just some classic reality TV scripting examples. Sniping the number four spot is The Real Housewives. The franchise has been bringing drama to our television screens for years now. But throughout the series, people have all had the same question in mind. Are the storylines scripted? We got some truth on the situation after a reality TV producer held an Ask Me Anything about the show. If you missed it, that is okay because I am here to set the record straight for you guys. They responded to the question with, each housewife is assigned to their own story producer whose job 
job is to develop their storyline. So they conspire to create plot points, images, etc. Each story producer's housewife is their responsibility. They further explain that the producers will actually add drama in whenever they can just to make sure that the show remains interesting. In our third spot is Ghost Hunters. Some people will say that every ghost paranormal show is fake. I guess it all depends on your own personal beliefs and opinions. Ghost Hunters follows Jason Hawes and Grant Wilson hunting down ghosts when people report a paranormal experience. The show was popular. People genuinely believe their investigations until their former case manager, Donna LaCroix, did an interview and exposed how fake it was. She said the show was completely entertainment based and the places they claimed to be investigating for the first time had really been investigated numerous times beforehand by other paranormal teams. She also said that there was a staging crew and one time they did inauthentic editing and she was told to keep her mouth shut. I'll open it for you girl. I got you. I just said it all. Taking over our number two spot is the X Factor. There was a point in time when everyone was convinced that people were really showing up in front of the judges and auditioning their hearts out for the singing competition. But over time, things have been exposed, showing that this is just as fake as Donald Trump's tan. I went there. Turns out the auditions we see aren't actually their first audition. They were selected from previous auditions or scouted from YouTube, and the whole process actually takes several months. One former contestant named Daisy Gill posted a video revealing that her family and friends were actually used as extras in some scenes and that everything is a lot more staged than we think. On top of that, you don't actually have to be an amateur singer to apply. Apparently anyone can apply. They once had Katie Wassell, who starred in Celebrity Big Brother, and Lauren Murray, who was featured on a single by Timbaland. So. You can be a pro and pretend you're an amateur. In the number one spot is RuPaul's Drag Race. Now, I put this as number one because this show is my heart and soul and I personally refuse to believe that there is anything fake about it. But after some research, I came across tweets that former contestant Fifi O'Hara sent out claiming that some parts of the show are fake. She said that they were all game pieces in Ru's show and that production edited episodes completely tweaking what really happened. She even gave specific examples of how we saw something different than what really happened, down to the point where producers would reposition the girls before every take and give them certain lines to say, pretty much staging and setting up every scene. My heart just broke a little bit today. I'm sad. Still love the show though, I'm still gonna watch it. Well, I feel like I've ruined enough lives for today. Let me know what you're thinking down in those comments and fire a thumbs up if you at least enjoyed it. For now, I'm gonna end the video with some common shout outs. Karen Rose says, Markle should not go back to acting and not allowed in the US. She left, good riddance. <laughs> All right, I mean, to each their own opinion, but like, she's not an assassin. I feel like she could go to the US. All I'm gonna say. Phyllis Dix says, love your videos, and I'm with you on the feeds her kid like a bird thing. Ew. Thank you, and I am glad I'm not alone on that. Ew. Gary Maxian says, Lucy said that you have abs for days. Is this true? I feel like everyone is staring at me now. However, thanks Lucy, I didn't know you said nice things about me. Daryl Drabin says, Meghan Markle can stay in Canada. I don't know what people have against her, but I'm okay if she stays in Canada, because I really like her. All right guys, that is all I have for you. Make sure you leave a like and a comment if you haven't already. You might be featured in our next video, and you can just stay on this screen and keep watching more videos. But for now, enjoy these bloopers. That was fake though, now I'm off that that was all staged, bullshit. That is some hot tea.